How you doing? I'm Solomon Perry. And uh, in my face-off audition today, I'm going to turn myself from a young black person to an old white person. I started off with a form that was originally my face. And then I did, of course, you know, I do the life cast. And I did it with algae in it. And then I pour the positive master with plaster. It rhymed. And then I actually add a plaster base onto it. And since I use plaster for my replica, I use plaster for my base to make the initial mold because that's going to stick to the head. And then I put my clay on top of that to build the form. And then I'm getting ready to super seal off the sides. So that's what you want to do. You want to seal that off so the mold doesn't, uh, you know, this stuff's really brittle. I don't want it to break off. I just want that rubber to come right off of there. And I hear spray children. Ooh -wee. That's pretty toxic smelling. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for like 10 minutes and then I'm going to paint on my brush on my first layer of the mold that goes on top. No, actually, first I'm going to create air flow and all the high points. The reason why you want to do that is because whenever you push the mold together or pour mold, you want to have a place for the air bubbles to go to. If not, they're going to be in your piece. Next, as you can see here, I have added all of my air. Okay, so what I've tubes. done is I've brushed on the initial layer of the dragon skin mold, and then I've gone on and pour on an additional layer to kind of strengthen our little picks here. So once we put on the glob of torture and the casing on top, it doesn't, you know, move these little picks out of the place. So then that creates my proper airflow for the mold. So far, I have created air ducts and holes and air ducts on top of my thick plaster, uh, I mean, my thick rubber mold here. So I've actually created a two-way air duct system that has tiny ones inside so I don't lose any definition. And then I have big ones on the outside. So once I pour my plaster on top of this and I cake it on top and I smear it all around, these little air things sticking up top here will give me maximum airflow into the smaller airflow that's inside of it. Okay, so what I've done is I poured two masks. We're using the press method. This one was a reject first. Of course, you know, sometimes your first one will come out a reject, but what you'll do is you'll be able to assess the next one. So I had too much pigmentation there and it was like really nasty on the inside. It didn't come out that good as far as pigmentation. But the you know, uh it wasn't enough material and it was also uh too pigmented and it wasn't lined up on the little notches. So once I lined it up, I bum -ba -da -da, poured a perfect one. So I have a perfect one that looks perfect. Thank you for your time and hope you enjoyed my transformation. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.